Hey, welcome! Today I'm talking about maximum likelihood. Well, you know, honestly, I don't... I don't really feel like talking about it. And you know, it, it's really, it's complicated. And it's really hard to understand, so... You know, I'm just gonna call it a day, you know? Yeah, we're, we're not talking about maximum likelihood today. Wait a minute! What? Let me take over! Wait, what? You want to take over? Yes. Uh, okay, I guess, uh, I guess my daughter's gonna teach you maximum likelihood? Uh, okay, uh, just hold on a minute. Okay. Is, is this thing on? Hello? Hello? I guess it's on. Do you guys know what I'm supposed to say? <laughs> maximum likelihood. Couldn't be any easier to understand. Let's start with a metaphor. Let's say you're a lazy tennis player. Your ideal match is to stand in one place and not move the entire match. We don't want that. Yeah, that's what we want. Let's say you know in advance where every single hit is going to land. Boink, boink, boink. So you decide you're gonna stand in the one place that will minimize the amount you have to run. Whee! But how do you figure that out? Here's an idea. Pick a random place. I don't care which. Maybe you stand right here. At four feet from the sideline. Or maybe it's four meters, I don't know. I'm an American. And for each tennis ball, compute the distance you would have to run. So for these balls at 11 feet, you would have to run 11 feet minus four feet. That's seven feet. I can do math. And for these balls at around eight feet, you would have to run eight minus four or four feet. I did that math in my head. Then all you have to do, sum up all the distances across all the tennis balls. Like this. This variable location tells you where the ball landed. A guess of the best place to stand is four feet. And a distance ran tells us how far we'd have to run if we stood at four feet from the sideline. Then all you have to do, sum up all the distances across all the tennis balls. Seven plus five plus one plus two. Plus one, etc., etc. And if we sum up those distances, we get 90 total feet ran. That's a lot of running. You'd have to do it again, but at a new place. So maybe you guess you should stand at six feet. That looks better. And then sum up the distance into distances for that new place. This time we get 74 total feet. That's a bit less running. Yay! Party, 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 yeah. That's a huge improvement. And if the total distance you had to run is smaller than it was before, you keep moving in that direction and you compute a new sum and then do it again and then again and then again and then again. <laughs> and you keep moving until the distances start to increase. So what you're really doing is walking around until you find the minimum distance you have to run. And look at this pretty picture. This line shows us the total distance run. If we stand at the sideline, we'll have to run 150 feet. But as you move right, the distances decrease until you stand at about seven feet. Right here. When you stand there, you only have to to run a total of 66 feet. But, but if you stand more than seven feet away, the distances increase again. Yay! Now, 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 I know what you're saying. That's super inefficient. Who in the right mind would guess that at the places that they should stand and compute distances? You'd have to run like that. Who in the right mind would do that? That's a whole lot of work. There's gotta be a better way. Couldn't you just compute the mean of all the distances and stand right at the mean, like right here? Hmm, yes, you could do that. Anyway, yeah, it would be a lot easier, but it's just an example. So you're probably wondering, what in the bedizzle does this have to do with statistics? Statistics, 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 statistics. 
stop. Just like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Don't, it's okay. I'll tell you how it relates to, to Sistixis. You ever seen a scatter plot? Yeah. And if we draw lines from each of these dots to the regression line, we call that a, regis, a re residual. Yeah, that's the word. Except now, instead of minimizing the distance we have to run, we are minimizing the size of the residual. Oh. The size of the residual. Residual. Yeah, that's what. So what we could do is try a bunch of regression lines like this, or this, or this. <laughs> and find the regression line that makes those residuals smallest. And once we have found the regression line where the residuals, residuals, where the residuals are smallest, we call that the local minimum. Minimum. Minimum value of the residuals. Remember this plot for regression. To find the line, we have to find two values. The slope and the intercepts. So a plot like this won't work. Instead, we need another plot. Usually people use a contour plot like this. Here, X is the value of the intercept. Why is the value of the slope? The color shows the size of the residuals. 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 And the crosshairs shows which values have the local minimum. Whee! Now it is time for a quick tangent. Why is this called a local minimum? Sometimes for complex questions, there are more than one minima, like in this example. If the computer starts here, it might crawl to this spot rather than this spot. Uh-oh! But remember, we actually don't know the entire landscape, so the algorithm doesn't know if it's a local minimum or is it a global minimum. <laughs> Technical side note to my technical side note. Oh dear, this is getting technical. How do you avoid local minima? It's impossible to avoid. But you can run the algorithm over and over again, but starting from different places, and so you'll run into lots of local minima, but then you can choose the minimum list of the minima. Or, or you could do what's called a grid search, where you explore the entire landscape. But that's very impractical for all but. <laughs> I said but. Very small problems, because you have to explore every combination of variables. But if you have lots of values you're trying to find, like the regression line for this model, where there's a boat ton of parameters, and try every possible combination of those values, you're gonna be waiting a long time. A long, long, long time. We call this an optimization algorithm. I definitely said it right. So in statistics, you give the algorithm some function to minimize or to maximize, like before. Our function was the residuals. We wanted to minimize those. Once we give it the function, we ask the computer to find the optimal solution. Optimal solution! And it will find a random location on the plot, like maybe here, or 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 here, anywhere. And then the algorithm will crawl the landscape until it finds that local minimum. That local. Wait a minute. I forgot about one part. Um, but let me give some turn turn along turn along One starting parameters. That's the place on the map where it starts. Definition number two. Conversion. Convergence is when it finds a place on that map where it cannot improve any more or the local minimum. Definition two a. Hmm. Non-convergence. If you cannot find the local minimum, like in this plot, there are lots of places that have the same fit. 
So you don't know if the best fit is 0 0.6 and 0 0.025, or 0.8 and 0 0.03, or 1 and 0 0.031. It's ridiculous! Because they all fit equally well. That, my friends, is a convergence failure. <laughs> convergence failure. <laughs> that, my friends, is a convergence failure. Definition number three, loss function. The equation that can pre computes the misfit. The misfit, the misfit, the mis mis misfit, the la, 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 la. So in our metaphor, the loss function was the distance we ran. With our regression example, it was the sum of the residuals. Now, now, what is maximum likelihood? Actually, it is my tea time. Farewell, beloved audience. It has been a pleasure. Remember to like, subscribe, and take a class at simplistics.net. We really need the money. Last night we had dirt for dinner. Don't tell anybody. Aspen, what were you saying? Anyway, moving on. So this process that my uh, daughter described is called optimization. And to review the basic idea behind optimization is that we are looking for a solution like a mean or a regression line or something like that. And we ask the computer, what is the solution? And one of its approaches is to do an optimization algorithm. And what it will do is it will choose an arbitrary value for that mean or slope or whatever we're trying to estimate. And it will compute some sort of loss function is what we call it. And that loss function tells us how bad the fit is, or in some cases, how good the fit is. And then it will adjust that value and compute the loss function again. And then if it improves, it will continue to make adjustments similarly until it finds a point where it can't improve the solution anymore. That's the basic idea behind optimization. And one specific way of doing optimization is called maximum likelihood. And that gets a little technical. So I think I'm gonna reserve that for another video. So yeah, next video, I'm gonna talk about optimization through maximum likelihood. Yeah. Hope you've enjoyed this. As a reminder, if you want to take a class with me, visit simplistics.net. And you can take live classes, or you could take classes at your own pace. Whatever you want. We got it all, man. It's just a never-ending stats party over at Simplistics, man. It's 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 amazing. It's amazing. So, hope to see you there. Anyway, with that, peace out. <laughs>